Hello there, it's Michael Fudge, the Python newbie, and we're here to talk about lab walkthrough number one. Let's get started. All right, everyone, let's start with UCode 1.1. So it's asking you to take this one up here and rewrite it so that it uses a variable. Now before we get into that, let's think about what the variable does for us. When we run this program up here, it asks for us to put type in our name. And then on the next line, it just says hello, but it can't say hello to us by our name because we aren't storing the information that we input on line one anywhere in the computer. So it's we're asking for input and then we're just throwing it out. So you, you could cheat, right, and say, hello there, Mike, like this, right? But that isn't what we want to do. We don't want to manipulate our code for every single input. That would be the world's worst iPhone if, in order to get weather anywhere else than where you are, you would have to change in your iPhone when you fly to Miami and then get an iPhone in Miami just so you can get the weather in Miami. That would be silly. Where you are located is an input, right? So we want that to vary based on where you are, hence a variable. So what we want to do is we want to rewrite this to use a, a variable. Variables are given names, so I can call the variable whatever I want. I'm going to call it um, my name. And I'm going to set the variable value equal to whatever we input. What? is your name and that's just to show you how this works i'm going to print my name down here so print says output something right so normally when we output hello there you know we're getting a literal thing that prints out because it's in quotes so what is your name mike it still says hello there if we say my name, it's no longer literal because there's no quotes around it. So what it will print is the contents or the value of the variable, which is whatever we typed in the input on line two. So let's run it again. What is your name? And you'll see now it says Mike. Now to finish it off, we want it to say hello there, Mike. So I'm going to print hello there. And then I'm going to separate this and this with a comma. You have to, you know, so it print this first, then print this second. And then it's going to say hello there, Mike. And let's run it one more time. There you go. Hello there, Mike. So that's one one U code. All right, let's continue on with 1.2 U-code. So what we learned in the lab up until this point is that the, what you name a variable it becomes very important. And up here we had just X's and Y's, and X was a city and Y was a state. And this code in up here and this code down here are the same code, but the one down here is easier to read because we can see the intent behind the variables. And this is an important aspect of programming, is programming is just as much for people as it is for the computer. So it's important that we make our intentions clear with the code that we write. So down in 1.2 U-code, we are asked to debug this program uh, and fix errors to make it work, and also think about more appropriate names for the variables. So step one, let's get it working. Step two, let's think about how we can make it so the program, uh, the program intentions are clear. Now, normally when you have to do these debugs, you're giving a sample of what should happen. So here I should, um, it should enter your name and then I should input that, Mike, enter your age, and then I input that, 25, and I'm dreaming, I wish it was 25. And then down here it should say, Mike is 25. Okay, so that's the output. So the first two lines are the input, the last line is the output. So let's look at our code here. Usually when I'm doing these debug ones, I like to start by just running it and seeing what happens. So it says invalid syntax here on line two. All right, so if I look, um, it looks like I'm right there, I'm doing something wrong. Probably need this parenthesis as part of the way that the input command works. It needs to have this parenthesis here. It needs to be surrounded by that. So I'm gonna put those in there, okay? 
Now let's run it again. Oh, we're, we're getting somewhere, right? Enter your name, Mike. Enter your age, 25. A man can dream. And it says Mike <clears throat> is and then blank. Because what it didn't print out is my age, you know, 25, right? So what variable in here has the age? Well, this line here does the input for that. So it stores it in this variable, foo. So I should say uh, Mike is comma foo. Mike, age 25. And then it says Mike is 25. Problem solved. Now, I argue you could make this program even better by using appropriate variable names. Foo is a horrible name for the variable. What are we asking for? Age. So we should probably call this variable age. And make sure you change this one too so it reflects it. Now you can run it. And you'll see that it still works the same way, only it reads much better because now no one has to guess what foo is. We know it says age, it probably is someone's age. It says name, it's probably someone's name based on the inputs. Okay, that's 1.2. All right, let's talk 1.3. From 1.2, we jump right into 1.3. In this U-Code challenge, we're asking you to write your own independent program. So now you really got to turn on the, the thinking cap. And we want you to write a program that um, inputs your first name and then inputs your last name. And then it should output, hello, Mike Fudge, or hello, first name, last name. So again, we want to use appropriate variable names. We don't want to use X and Y, right? We want, you know, the first thing represents our first name and the second thing re represents our last name. So that's what we want to use. And we will need one input for each variable. That's basically how it works. You input one thing at a time, All right? So let's see if we can do this. So let's input the first name, first name. Now I, can't, I see I have the underscore here. Um, that's because I want to say first name and I could do it like this or I could do it like this. Um, but I, I'm horrible at typing, so I like to just keep it all lowercase. Um, if I put a space between them, it'll think they're two different things, first and name. So we don't want that. We want them to be treated as one thing, hence the underscore. So first name, input, enter your first name. And then last name input, enter your last name. Okay, I'm gonna run this. So enter your first name, enter your last name. Okay, and it looks like it doesn't do anything, but actually what it did is it stored Mike in the variable first name and Fudge in the variable last name. If I were to just cheat here and add another cell and just say first name, what's in first name, what's in last name, you'll see it tells me Mike is in first name, Fudge is in last name. So the, the variables were set on those two lines. Now I just need to add that third line to print out, hello, Mike Fudge. So print, I wanna print the literal word, hello. Then I wanna print the first name variable, then the last na name variable, like that. Uh, There we go. That's 1.3. So again, I had a problem and I broke it up into steps. Input number one, input number two, print out the message as output. All right, in 1.4, we uh, introduce the concatenation operator, which allows you to combine variables and text together to build one long piece of text or one long string. and we we need that in order to print this output your colors are red comma green comma and blue right um, for inputs red green and blue what this program does is it wants you to use a variable for each input seems easy enough uh, and then um, produce output like the example okay. let's break it down into pieces a lot of times when you're trying to write a program and it's difficult it is a good idea to to just sort of break it up into doable pieces. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just basic input and output. I'm gonna input the three variables and I'm gonna output the three variables. I think I can handle that.
So let's do um, color one input. Enter your first color. How's that? Color two. Notice how I'm not copying and pasting lines. It's a good um, habit to get into when you're learning to program to type the code every time. I know it's painful, and I know you could probably just go up here and copy this and paste it like that and edit your code, but don't do that. Trust me, you're gonna learn it so much better if you take the time to get in the habit of typing in the code. It's also gonna reduce the number of bugs you have, mistakes you make. Because you have to think about everything you're doing. Okay, let's see what we got so far. I'm gonna print color one, color two, color three. Oh, I got a mistake on line four. I'm gonna turn my escape L to turn my line numbers on. And uh, line four is here. Oh yeah, I got it, yeah, okay. Okay, first color, um, red, white, blue. So, and then it prints out my colors, red, white, and blue. Okay, so normally when I'm attacking a program, there's, you know, there it's not as simple as input, output. Like you're writing a program that you input a city and it outputs the current weather. Okay, input, output, simple. How do you get the weather? That's the hard part, right? So in this one, it's input three colors and then output your colors are this. And then the middle color is and then whatever the middle, middle color is. So there's a little more thinking that I, I need to do. Um, so let's try to formulate this statement here. So I'm gonna say print your colors are, and then I'm gonna print out color one, and then color two, and then and color three. This is just a start. Who knows if it's right? You gotta do something, right? To figure out if what you're doing is correct. Uh, first color, red, white, blue, white, blue. And it says your colors are red, white, and blue, but I'm missing the little comma. See that? Red, comma, white, comma, and blue. And then I'm missing the period at the end, right? It's like hair splitting, right? But let's figure out how to at least get the commas in there, right? So I got, I print my color. I print my color and then I wanna print a comma. Then I print the next color and I wanna print a comma before the and. Let's see what that looks like. Red, white, blue. Uh, now I got my commas in there. Now it's not perfect. And we're gonna learn down here in 1.5 how to make it perfect, okay? So at this point, you could say close enough. Now it's not exactly like this, but that's close enough. Again, let's try to get the middle color. Now the, the trick here with getting the middle color is which color do we input second? It's color two, right? First we input color one, then we input color two, then we input color three. So the trick is really to just print the middle color is color two. That's the second color we entered, right? Red, white, blue. Your colors are red, white, and clue, because I can't type. Your middle color is white. Okay, that's one, four. All right, in the last um, one, five U code, this is the last one before the lab is done. And what we want to do here is rewrite 1.4 to use f strings so it should output using f strings and the, the basics of f strings are it's it does what's called variable interpolation which is just a fancy way of saying put this right here so it's a, you have print and then this f says i'm going to do what's called variable interpolation 
And then this name is a variable. So ex whatever name is, which is Mary, goes right here. And then there's a space and then is a, and then whatever the Mary's major is goes right here. And then a bunch of other text and then whatever her GPA is goes right here. And that gives you a nice smooth inline um, look to your output. So you can format your output exactly the way you might want it uh, up here. Right? We had trouble doing that with the print, which is why we introduced you to the F string so that you can do it. Now, when you're doing this, it's a good idea to rewrite your code. So um, I'm going to copy and paste this code down here, but I'm only doing it so I can see it. But I really should be in the habit of rewriting my code because I, I want to learn how to code and learning how to code is hands on the keyboard. You want to get better hands on keyboard, right? So I know the first three um, inputs are going to be exactly the same, but you might not know that. So you would go ahead and type. And I'll save you the, the time of doing that. Okay. So that, that's pretty much the same. Now we're going to get down to the prints and we want to use an F string instead, right? So it's print as an F string. And we want to say, let's go up and look at our instructions again. Um, your colors are colon red, green, and blue. I'm actually going to take this and copy this down here. And I'm going to put it right in here. Right. And then here, I don't want to always print red. I want to print color one. So that if I want to print color one right here, I use curly braces and type in color one like that. And then I want this to be color two. So I remove that curly braces, color two. And then I want this to be color three. And then what's the other message? The other message is the middle color is like that. So I'll put that in here. The middle color is, and then where green is, I want to use color two. Now I know I did some copying and pasting here, um, but I did that because what I needed was way up here and it's way down there. And I, I wouldn't want to mistype it. Um, there's no point in wasting your time on a video watching me type these these in again and type um, stuff in like this all wrong. So that's why I did did it that way. But you should definitely practice uh, coding. So we're gonna run it. Red, green, blue. It says uh, your colors are red, green, and blue. See how like nicely formatted that is. It's nice in line. If you look at that compared to this one up here, see we had a hard time getting that to look right. It's much better with the F string. The other thing you'll notice is that it didn't um, interpolate color too, and that's I did that on purpose. You have to put the F in front of the string in order for it to be interpolated. And if you notice, uh, it just literally printed out color two, um, and and the curly braces around color two. And then when I put the F over here, it now turns dark. It's no longer red. And because of that, it's trying to tell you that it's going to replace this with the value of color two. So let's give it one more run. Green, 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 purple, orange. Okay, your colors are green, purple, and orange. Your middle color is purple. That was the second color I entered. So that's one five. All right, that's it for this week's lab walkthrough. We'll see you next time. Bye.